On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at going nowhere fast. Again, I was going nowhere fast. Not only was I going nowhere fast, I was going in the wrong direction fast. And so many of us, when we encounter the Lord, when we hear His voice in our lives and in our hearts, we realize, I've been going in the wrong direction. So it's a beautiful story of uh, Martha and Mary, Jesus visiting them, Jesus showing up at their house. Can you imagine that? Talk about a wonderful, unexpected guest. And, um, and Martha complains. Now, this is one of these stories in Scripture um, that kind of sh- is meant to shock us a little bit. It's one of those stories um, that even might even bug some of us a little bit. And there's a lot of stories like that in Scripture. You know, we, we kind of get used to them because we've heard them so many times, they kind of lose their shock value. But so many of the stories in Scripture, they're, they're, they're shocking, you know? They're, they're meant to jar us a bit, like the story of the prodigal son. You know, the father gives half of his inheritance to his son, his son squanders it all, he comes back, the father throws a party. Like, what's up with that? You know, or the story of the people who go to work in the field. Some start early in the morning, but the ones who start at the end of the day and only work for maybe an hour get paid the same. Like, can you imagine? I'd love to work for that guy. I'd be late for work every day, you know? You know or, the, or the thief who died next to Jesus. We call him the good thief. Lived a wretched life, maybe his whole life. And he says, Jesus, remember me. And Jesus says, this day you will be with me in paradise, paradise, straight to heaven. Can you imagine? Anyways, the story of Martha and Mary, it's kind of one of those stories. It's meant to shock us and not meant to bug us. This story um, bugged in a particular way. The, the founder of our community, Father Bob Bedard, he said his mother never liked this gospel. Every, every time this gospel was read on Sunday, she, she wasn't too happy. She wasn't impressed. She says that, that, that Mary, she was a lazy good for nothing. She should, have got, she should have got up and helped help serve. You know, Jesus, Jesus shouldn't have encouraged uh, Mary doing nothing, you know. But again, um, Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus' response to Mary is, or to Martha rather, is, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. And we can ask ourselves, you know, why did Jesus affirm what Mary was doing? And why does Jesus shock us? You'd expect Jesus might say like, yeah, you know, you're serving selflessly and your reward will be great in heaven. Jesus didn't say that. He said, no, Mary, she got it right. Why? Why does Jesus affirm Mary? The reason Jesus affirms Mary is because hearing Jesus' words is a matter of life and death. Simple as that. Hearing Jesus' words, hearing His voice, is a matter of life and death. And we hear this in many places in Scripture, and in particular in John chapter 5, beginning in verse 24. Listen to this. Jesus says, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. And, I will, and will not come to condemnation, but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. So again, Mary and Martha, they have an unexpected guest, a great rabbi, a teacher, someone who draws the crowds. And, and Mary somehow has the wisdom, has the insight, has the grace to say, you know what, I need to listen to what this man has to say. I need to hear his words. And Martha, for some reason, she's more concerned about the serving and all that, and serving is important, we know that. But at this particular moment, what is most important is to listen to what this man has to say, to hear his words. Perhaps Martha and Mary never heard the words of eternal life yet. They might have just heard that, yeah, he's a great teacher, he works miracles, he heals people. But again, if they haven't heard his word, hearing his word 
is a matter of life and death, and Mary catches that. She sits at His feet. This is a special, graced, privileged time. Let's not miss that. Miss this. Have you ever experienced that before where at a point in your life you realize this is the time to listen to God's voice? This is the time to pray. This is the time to be with the Lord. And again, Mary, she, she, didn't, she didn't miss that, and that's why the Lord Jesus um, affirms her. You know, the reality is, is that if we haven't heard God's voice in our life, the voice of Jesus that gives us life, if we haven't heard that voice in our hearts, it is very likely that we're going in the wrong direction in our lives. It's very likely that we're going nowhere fast. And again, Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, she might have been cluing into this. Not only does this man have beautiful words, powerful words, but he has a direction for my life. He's here to give meaning to my life. He's here to make my life finally make sense, a direction and a purpose. And yes, you know, serving the, the meal is all important, but right now, I need to know who I am. I need to know what life is all about. I need to know what my destiny is, my purpose. And again, Mary, she just drops everything. She's at the feet of Jesus, and she's listening to these words of eternal life, these words that give life. And again, it's, it's so easy for us to, to just be going completely in the wrong direction. I remember once uh, when I was... Uh, in Ottawa at St. Mary's Parish, a newly ordained priest. Um, there was a ski hill, one of my favorite ski hills, about an hour and a half from Ottawa. And this ski hill was only opened on weekends and on Wednesdays. And so what would happen is, is that on, it, it, on, on a Wednesday, if it had snowed Sunday night, Monday, and Tuesday, the snowboarding was phenomenal because there'd be tons of fresh powder. And no one, it was just a little, it was, it was, it was a small ski hill, but with a lot of vertical. So it had a, a beautiful run. It was a black diamond from top to bottom. And when that black diamond run got dumped on with snow, with fresh powder, sweetness itself, a foretaste of heaven. Anyways, the week came where Sunday night it started snowing, and it snowed and snowed and snowed, and on Monday it snowed all day, Tuesday it snowed all day, and I knew Wednesday is the day. So I canceled whatever I had, got up early, packed my snowboard, and started driving to the ski hill. And it was a cold day, so I decided I'd, I'd stop at a store and buy a Belclava, you know, those things to cover your face, so your goggles and your face... Uh, is nicely covered. So I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of rushing. I'm thinking about how awesome the fresh powder is going to be on run number four. And I stop in the store and I quickly buy a bell clava, hop back in my truck, and I keep driving. And then about you know 20 minutes after buying the bell clava, I noticed on the side of the road a bale of um, plastic tubing, a big bale of plastic tubing on the side of the road. And I thought to myself, gee, that's odd. There's a bale of plastic tubing here. And about, you know, half an hour ago, coming here, I saw a bale of plastic tubing. And then I realized, uh-oh, I'm going in the wrong direction. <laughs> After picking up my Belclava, I topped in my truck, and I started going back to Ottawa, away from the ski hill. Like, I lost, like, close to an hour, and I was like, because I wanted to get first tracks. You know, you want to be the first one so that it's just fresh powder. But basically, again, I was going nowhere fast. Not only was I going nowhere fast, I was going in the wrong direction fast. And so many of us, when we encounter the Lord, when we hear His voice in our lives and in our hearts, we realize, I've been going in the wrong direction. I've been living life with the wrong priorities. I've been making things important, so important, that are completely useless. Maybe not only useless, but destructive. Can you imagine? And again, how many of us can, can identify with this and say, yeah, before I came to, to know the Lord, I was going nowhere fast. I was headed towards destruction. And the Lord Jesus speaks about this, and Scripture speaks about this. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 2, the Lord asks, why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what does not satisfy? 
And again, symbolically speaking, why are you spending what you have, your energy, your time, your talent, your dreams, your hopes, on what doesn't satisfy? And again, so many of us, we've been in these situations, and we, we hear stories of people like this. You know, you, you get the, the businessman who is just so intent on getting that ideal promotion or making that ideal amount of money, having that ideal number in his bank account, that he gives everything. He spends all he has, and he doesn't realize that his marriage is being destroyed, his relationship with his children is being destroyed, his, parent, his children can't stand him, his health is being destroyed, he's miserable, he doesn't have peace, and he's racing for something, and what for? It doesn't even satisfy. And I've spoken to people, I know you've spoken to people who've achieved their goal and they're not any happier. If anything, they feel more empty and more disappointed. Why? Because they were going nowhere fast. They were trying to find satisfaction in something that would ultimately not satisfy. Now again, I got nothing against someone working hard in their work and getting promotions and doing the best you can do. God wants us to do that. He wants us to do the best we can do in whatever situation He's putting us in. We know that. But it better be the right direction. It better be exactly what the Lord wants us to do. We better, get our, we better get our direction straight before we run off in some direction. The Lord, Jesus also speaks about this in John chapter 6. He tells us, Do not work for food that perishes, but for f- the food that endures for eternal life. The other reality is that when we take time to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to His voice, and in a particular way in our daily prayer time, our lives become more fruitful. Jesus is not affirming someone for not doing anything. The Lord Jesus, He has a lot of work for us to do. You better believe that whatever Jesus was speaking to Mary It was preparing her for action. It was preparing her for mission. It was preparing her for fruitfulness. It was preparing her to to be dynamic. Because we know when the Lord imparts His Spirit, He's imparting dynamism. And when the Spirit is given to us, the Spirit is not given to us simply to remain stagnant in us, but the Spirit is given to us to be dynamic. And so again, Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, is being animated for mission, for action. She's discovering her purpose. She's perhaps already discovering her own charisms, and she's ready to go forth on mission. And again, a fruitful mission. There's a big difference between being a productive person and being a fruitful person. A person can be very productive but not be accomplishing anything for the Lord and maybe not even be accomplishing much good, but a person can be fruitful, but might, might not seem to be, you know, as productive. You know, there was, there was a saint, I think it was St. Vincent de Paul, or, or a, a saint that worked with St. Vincent de Paul. He was known for being tremendously fruitful. Somehow, he was just this, this, uh, this source of apostolic fruitfulness. Everything he did just, just in a sense, in a spiritual sense, succeeded. He established these ministries for the poor, and people were just in awe at how much he got done. And his, he said, the secret is to be passive. The secret is to be able to do as little as possible so that the Lord may do as much as possible. And it's kind of a, a paradox, but again, if we're listening to the Lord's voice, if we're getting direction from the Lord, things get done beautifully. Why? Because God knows the most efficient way to get things done. You know, sometimes when I'm here at the office and I got a lot of things to do, which is kind of fairly typical, um, I feel overwhelmed. Like, where do I start? You know, I got emails and phone calls and desk work and all that kind of thing. Overwhelmed. And what I'll do is I'll go uh, to the chapel with a little piece of paper and I'll say, Lord, give me three things to do, three, three small things. 
and I'll listen and I'll just, the three things that come to mind that seem to make sense, I'll write them down, I'll go back to my office and I'll do those things. And it's amazing how often in a short time a lot of things get done, but not only do they get done, they get done with joy and with peace. The kind of the anxiety of, oh, this is too much, it goes away. It's like the Lord is saying, hey, do these things and the job will get done. Now, some of the people in the office say, well, he doesn't get that much work done. It doesn't seem to be working too much, but uh, <clears throat> I'm getting some stuff done, okay? But again, when the Lord is directing our lives, he, he, he gives us a fruitfulness. Somehow things happen around us. Somehow things bear fruit around us. And again, it's not our own work. It's just, we're, we're, just, we're just following orders. When you follow the Lord's orders, things get done. They get done well. They get done peacefully. They get done joyfully and, um, and fruitfully. Another basic wisdom is to begin our day in prayer. I just want to say a word about that while we're on the uh, topic of, uh, of, of prayer. Do you remember the story in the Old Testament? The Israelites, they're going through the desert. They've escaped Egypt. They're going through the desert on the way to the Promised Land. It took them 40 years to get there. But anyways, during those 40 years, there was no food in the desert because there's no food in the desert. So the Lord rained down manna from heaven. And what they would do is they would pick the manna every day except for on uh, the Sabbath. They would pick twice as much the day before. But what was interesting about this manna is they had to pick it first thing in the morning because when the heat of the day came out, this manna would dissolve. It would disappear. And in the Book of Wisdom, book of, the Book of Wisdom is kind of a book that it, it interprets a lot of these Old Testament stories. But in the Book of Wisdom, it explains, it, it begins in verse 16 of, of Wisdom, just talking about this manna and how it came down from heaven and all of that, uh, and how every person that would eat it, it would have a, a, a unique taste based on what you like to eat or something like that, which is really cool. It says, uh, who received it was changed to whatever flavor each one wished. Can you imagine? But anyways, in verse 27 and 28, it explains why the manna was only available early in the morning. It says, for what was not destroyed by fire melted when merely warmed by a momentary sunbeam. To make known to one to make known that one must give you thanks uh, before sunrise and turn to you at daybreak. Oh, did you know that? The Lord wants us to go to Him early in the morning. There's a, there's a mysterious grace to the morning time. Now, I know some of you might be on shift work and all that. It's not, it's not an absolute you know, uh, obligation that we have to take our prayer time in the morning. Some people take their prayer time later in the, in the evening. That's fine. But the point is, the Scripture is very clear that there is a special grace to starting our day with prayer. There's, there's, there's something about starting our day with prayer that gives us a serenity throughout the day. It's like starting our day right. I remember uh, a few years ago, I was trying to get a lot done in the morning, and I was, I was kind of experimenting with different morning schedules. And I, at one time, I would do my morning prayer a little later in the morning. I thought that might work better. But things weren't getting done. It was kind of frustrating. It wasn't fruitful. And then I went back to doing my holy hour first thing in the morning when I get up, which is what, what I would typically do. And I remember when I went back to doing that holy hour first thing in the morning, it seemed like I had somehow gained time. By the time 10 o'clock arrived or 11 o'clock arrived, it's like I had extra time. And it's like the experience of multiplication of time. And I've experienced that many times. You know, when you have something to do and you're really busy and you take time to pray before, Somehow it seems like time gets multiplied. That's why like when I have meetings, I don't like meetings. None of you like meetings, I'm sure. No one likes meetings. When I have meetings, it's very important that we start with prayer. And ideally a pretty good prayer, not just a quick, you know, Lord, help us, amen. It, as a matter of fact, if we're really tight for time, I think it's good to take extra time for prayer. Why? Because God multiplies time. You know, you have a meeting, you pray before, and somehow a lot gets done in a short time. Anyways, I'm not going to go on about that because it's, it, it's talk, we're talking about work and it's Sunday and no one wants to think about work on Sunday. Um, 
Have I shared with you before the story of the shepherd? You know the story of Psalm 23, the good shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's a beautiful little book written, and it was written by a shepherd, a man who for many years took care of sheep, and then he became a scientist, and he wrote a book about Psalm 23, and he talks about how difficult one of the biggest challenges for a shepherd is to find clean drinking water for the sheep. Now, he was one of these real shepherds, not just the, you know, fenced-in sheep, but one of these shepherds that would wander around through the mountains depending on the different seasons. But anyways, he said, the danger is, is if your sheep drink water just in little stagnant pools that are muddy and there's other bad stuff in them, they can get um, parasites in that, and that really messes them up. They, they get sick, they get agitated, and it's miserable for the sheep, it's miserable for the shepherd. But he says that if you take your sheep out early in the morning when the grass is dew-laden, you know, you know when grass is dew-laden, he says your sheep can go for months drinking, getting hydrated only by the dew-laden grass. If they eat that dew-laden grass, they get hydrated, and he says that's the cleanest water you can get. This water that's crystal clear, clean. And he says what happens is these shepherds who get up early, take their sheep to dew-laden grass. The sheep eat for, you know, whatever, an hour or two hours. And then when the sun comes out, the dew disappears and the sheep are full. They're, they're, they're well fed and they're well hydrated. And he says for the rest of the day, you know what the sheep do? Absolutely nothing. They sit, they sit around in the shade. They're content. They're happy. They're healthy, and they just, they just ruminate all day. And guess what? He says shepherds love that. There's nothing better than having happy sheep who are doing nothing, who are just sitting content. And same thing with ourselves. You know, again, if we start our day with prayer in the presence of the Lord, and again, for some of us it might be 15 minutes, for some of us it might be an hour, but anyways, if we start our day in the presence of the Lord, if we allow Him to feed us, to, to speak His Word to us, to, to console us, to direct us, to give us His power and His grace, the rest of our day we will be able to rest in the Lord, even in the busy activities of our day, and there will be a serenity, a peace in our heart. There is this kind of wonderful uh, lack of anxiety. And again, this is what Martha was dealing with, and this is what Jesus warned against. He said to Martha, he said, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. And you don't have to put your hand up, but how many of you are anxious and worried about many things? You might want to ask yourself, am I supposed to be anxious? anxious and worried about many things. Jesus says there is need only of one thing. And that's the beautiful thing. Jesus makes things simple. A lot of us think, oh, if I want to get rid of my anxieties and worries, it's going to be complicated. No, it's not going to be complicated. All you need to do is go to the Lord. Go to the Lord in prayer. Sit at His feet. Rest your head against His heart like John the beloved disciple did. Read His Word. Listen to His Word if you can. Even go before the blessed sacrament. Go before the Lord Jesus. And that one thing putting God first, surrendering to Him, trusting in Him, listening to Him, the one thing will solve everything. There is need for only for one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. Like Jesus says, I will give you a joy no one will take away. And so again, today, brothers and sisters, my exhortation for you and for us as a people is let us be men and women of prayer. Let us not be a church full of active people with lots of dreams and visions, and, and visions, but who are not sitting at the Lord's feet. Because again, if we want to see the Lord's fruitfulness in our midst, in our ministries, we must pray. We must pray every single day. We must hear His voice, receive His power, so that we can do His work for His glory. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Going Nowhere Fast, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2TA. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Going Nowhere Fast. 
On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the kingdom of Jesus. And boy, were they in for a surprise. Because again, Jesus' kingdom was, was a little different than they were expecting. But along with this expectation that, okay, Jesus is going to establish a kingdom. He's going to be greater than Solomon. It's going to be awesome. The disciples were thinking of job opportunities. Do you recall the expression, you have not because you've asked not? I don't know about you, uh, but for me, maybe I'm just a little too focused on what's going on in my own life, but sometimes I don't um, realize the needs of others until, until someone asks me for something. And frankly, I appreciate being asked so that I can give. And so today we ask you to pray about supporting us on a regular basis. You may have noticed if you've watched Food for Life, we don't have uh, corporate sponsors. Our sponsors are you, the viewers, those who are in a position to, uh, to support us. And like a household, um, we have uh, monthly expenses. And so we're finding for ourselves what's ideal is to invite people to join us uh, in support on a monthly basis. And now we have a number of ways to uh, make that convenient for you. You can, um, you can donate online uh, or through um, post-dated checks or through uh, an automatic deductions from, uh, from your account or from your, your credit card. So we're, we're asking you today to consider, prayerfully consider supporting us uh, on a monthly basis. So to, to benefit, uh, benefit those potentially who are not able to support us. So we'd invite you to consider that today. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1515. And today's topic, Father Mark Goring on Going Nowhere Fast. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107. Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website, www.foodforlifetvministry.org, and follow the link. If every viewer gave a loony or a toony each week, all expenses would be met. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the Kingdom of Jesus. And boy, were they in for a surprise. Because again, Jesus' kingdom was, was a little different than they were expecting. But along with this expectation that, okay, Jesus is going to establish a kingdom. He's going to be greater than Solomon. It's going to be awesome. The disciples were thinking of job opportunities. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Going Nowhere Fast, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Going Nowhere Fast.